If I'm being honest with you, I'm not sure why I threw my iPhone 14 Pro, but honestly, just don't ask. So the first developer beta of iOS 18 is here. Today is Friday, June 14th, and this released on Monday, June 10th at Apple's annual WWDC keynote. Along with the first beta of iOS 18, they also announced iPadOS 18, watchOS 11, macOS 15, and tvOS 18, along with VisionOS 2.0, which I just can't demonstrate, as I don't have $3,500 to drop on a headset. Now, I've used this first beta on my iPhone 14 Pro, which is my daily main driving phone for the last week. And I think that's enough time for me to be able to give an honest review about the new features that I've been able to test out and the stability of the first developer beta. Now, of course, this is developer beta number one, and things are most definitely going to be pretty buggy, as you can tell. Now, some of the newest features with iOS 18 are the ability to place your apps anywhere you want on the grid of your home screen. You are no longer restricted to that original order, starting from the top left corner and going down to the bottom right. You can now place them anywhere you would like, as you can tell from what I've done with my home screen. You also now have options to theme your icons and change the size of them. So if you make them large, you can see it gets rid of the text labels. We can make them the normal light mode, dark mode, which as you can tell is somewhat buggy and doesn't theme the app store or third party apps for that matter. Automatic to go with dark mode or light mode, depending on your device. And my personal favorite, the tinted icons. I'll go ahead and fix the color to how I had it previously, which is a very subtle purple to match my macOS Catalina wallpaper. iOS 18 also introduced a brand new control center where you can now move your toggles around freely however you'd like. This is my current control center setup. Here's an alternative one that I was testing out. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate how you can move them around. For example, what if I want the brightness slider right over here or the volume slider all the way down here. And as you can see, it is quite buggy. And there goes my volume slider completely invisible but let's just say I want it over here. Once it shows back up, you can see I can move anything I'd like to wherever I'd like. Now this is a big new feature and is something that people have wanted for quite a long time as the one that was introduced with iOS 11 was starting to get pretty bland. As you can see, you can now have it up to as many pages as you would like in your control center for different actions such as music or connectivity. Now, personally, I think the control center redesign is a massive W and is one of the best features in iOS 18. This control center redesign also applies to iPad OS 18. Now iOS 18 also brings the ability to customize your lock screen toggles and change them to whatever you'd like. I've kept the flashlight as the typical flashlight one, but I've replaced the camera one for Snapchat as I've always just slid over to get to the camera. If I go ahead and 3D press on the Snapchat icon, you can see that it goes ahead and opens up straight to Snapchat. These are just some of the features that arrived with iOS 18 and are the main ones that I'm gonna be reviewing today. Now, another big feature was Apple's all new Apple Intelligence, which is unfortunately not available on my iPhone 14 Pro, so I cannot demonstrate it in my review. And I believe that's also still under development until this fall, so I couldn't demonstrate it anyway. Now, the first thing that I wanna talk about is battery life. My battery life with iOS 18 developer beta one has been pretty solid in my opinion, although compared to iOS 17.2.1, which is the version I was previously running, I've definitely experienced more rapid battery drain, but nothing too severe. I'm currently on 51% battery and only started using it around 11.30 this morning. And since my battery health is still at 100%, I think that's a pretty solid battery life. Now, when it comes to bugs, bugs are definitely apparent. Now, one thing that I've experienced, and I'm not 100% sure if this has anything to do running these developer betas, but my Apple Watch has been disconnected from my iPhone all day. And despite numerous restarts on both of them, I simply just cannot get it to reconnect to my iPhone 14 Pro. My Apple Watch Series 9 is running watchOS 11.0 developer beta one. So I'm not sure if this is a bug included in the beta. If anyone is running iOS 18 and watchOS 11 and has experienced this, please let me know down below as I'd really like to know. Now, like you saw with the control center, the new control center is most definitely quite buggy and is not very stable yet. Reorganizing your icons does work and moving them around is a little bit buggy as I'll demonstrate by trying to move the volume down to here, for example. And you can just go ahead and see how terribly things go wrong. And now I have two completely invisible toggles. Wonderful. Doesn't this just look great? Now the new home screen features, in my opinion, have not been buggy at all. And I have experienced no issues with moving around my app icons to wherever I'd like. Now, like I displayed before, one issue with the dark mode for your icons is that the App Store icon does not get themed along with third-party app icons. Hopefully, before the full release, the App Store will be fixed and third-party app icons may be included. But for now, I'm just going to stick to the tinted 
as in my opinion, that is my favorite look. I mean, just take a look at these icons. So far, I have only experienced my phone automatically respringing once, and for one time over the last four days on developer beta number one, I would call that pretty stable. So I don't think that the stability of iOS 18 beta is a big issue. So if you're interested in trying it out and we're worried about stability, definitely don't worry about it. It's perfectly stable and is almost just as stable as iOS 17 was on my iPhone 14 Pro. I have experienced no lagging or speed differences in my device after updating, and it's just as snappy and if not better running iOS 18. Now it hasn't been very long, so I haven't had a lot of time to try out all the new features with watchOS 11, but if I get around to it, I may make a separate video discussing what's new with watchOS 11 and what I think about it. Overall, what I think about iOS 18 is when it comes to stability and the new features combined, I think that if you want to try it out, I would definitely recommend it. It's extremely stable compared to some of the previous iOS betas. Please nobody remind me of iOS 16 beta 1. That was rough. I haven't experienced any sort of extreme battery drain, and it has overall been a very positive and exciting experience. And this is just developer beta 1. Developer beta 2 is most likely going to be released this following Monday or Monday, June 24th. We're not sure yet. Once that drops, I'll give it a few days and then make a separate review video about that. Now, I didn't really have any criticism about iOS 18 developer beta 1 in this video, but expect some in the future as I am going to be being very honest with these reviews. Now, that's just about all I had to say, but if you're new here, please consider subscribing because as of right now, only 13% of my viewers are actually subscribed to my channel as it would really help me out in reaching my goal of 4,000 subscribers. Now, something that I did forget to mention in this video is that I have not yet tried out Mac OS 15 Sequoia, which is something that I have been wanting to try out, but haven't, got, but haven't got the chance to. I didn't love Sonoma, but I would love to try out some of the new features in Sequoia as I do have an M series MacBook and go ahead and report back to y'all on what I think about them. So look forward to a future video, definitely about Sequoia. And for anyone still wondering, I am still running Mac OS Monterey on my MacBook Pro. This is the M2 2022 model. And Ventura and Sonoma just really didn't do it for me, so I guess Monterey it is. But I will have a video up soon reviewing macOS Sequoia after I try it out, most likely on a dual boot, as I don't really want to permanently get rid of macOS Monterey. Anyways, enough yip yapping. I just want to go ahead and thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope this video helped you in deciding whether or not you want to try out the iOS 18 developer beta. Again, this is my main device, and I've experienced no issues taking the risk installing it on here. And in my opinion, I 100% recommend it. But of course, I'm not liable for any data you lose or any issues you run into and always back up your device before doing so. Enough yapping. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And as always, peace out, guys.